God will get you to your destiny. God will get you to your destiny. Today I want to talk about the idea that although all of us have a calling in God, too often we're focused on our calling and not our character. And that if you focus on your character, God will focus on your calling. In the kingdom of God, no matter what you accomplish, uh, your life matters. Can we just say that? That no matter what you do, no matter what trophies you have on the wall, no matter what you can say at your retirement party, or even what you can say on your deathbed, no matter what you accomplish, your life matters. Your life matters. Not because of what you do. Your life matters because you're a human being and you're loved by God. You're treasured. All right, can we just establish that? Okay, I don't mean to hammer it home, but I just want to say this. On that one point, you know, I just sang here with Haven. Do you think I love Haven more because she sang with me? Do you think, do any of you who are parents love your kids more when they do cool things? No, you're proud of them, you think it's great, you applaud them, but do you love them more? Absolutely not. God does not value you or love you more because of your trophies. So let's talk about calling, okay? But all of us do have a calling, and I just want to say four things before I actually get into the text. Four things about reflections on calling. Number one, I just want to say that all of us have more than one calling. All of us have more than one calling. We always think that there's this one great thing we're supposed to do in life. I'm supposed to write a best-selling novel. I'm supposed to become the senator of California. Uh, You know, you you come up with these ideas of things that, these great things that it's going to say in your grave or whatever, but let me just tell you that all of us have multiple callings all the time that God calls us to do this. And later he calls us to do that. Think about Jesus. We always think that Jesus had one calling, but he didn't really start his ministry until he was 30. Jesus, as a, as a child, was a faithful student. And then later he was a faithful carpenter. And he built things, and he had to work with people constantly. And all of that time, God was preparing him for the next calling, which was to be a rabbi. And even then, think about Jesus. He had 12 disciples. He's from a little podunk part of the empire that nobody really cared about. He wasn't even from Jerusalem. He was from like the northern outskirts. You know, but that was his calling. And God used those things uh, for, for major, major, obviously to change the whole world. So you never have just one calling. Number two, every calling comes to an end. This is maybe one of the saddest things because for many of us, when we're doing what God has called us to do, he's, I'm doing what I was born to do. Sometimes it suddenly comes to an end. We get fired, or we get an injury, or sick, or, or, or a divorce, or, or, or some twist happens in the plot, and we just weren't expecting that, and we think, but that's what I was called to do. How could God let this happen? But every calling comes to an end. No matter where you are in life, you are in a season. And seasons come and seasons go. And, if, and that's, that should give you hope, because if you're in a place of sort of an in-betweenness, well, God still has another calling for you. Number three, and I already said this, but your calling is not your identity. You know, I, I may be a pastor, and that's what I'm called to do at this time, but someday I may not be a pastor. And uh, that's not who I am. If what we do vocationally or what we do for a living becomes a part of our identity, then our soul is on a roller coaster because if that thing gets taken away from us, we lose our sense of who we are. And so our life becomes fragmented as we try and search for a new identity. The one thing that will never change in your life is that you are loved, that God loves you and never stop loving you. There's nothing you can do to change that. That is the constant. And if our lives are rooted in that truth, we will have a deep sense of peace and joy in everything else we do. Amen? Amen. Number four, and this is the thing I really want you to hear. If you're alive, you have a calling. If you're alive, you have a calling. I just want to say this. You didn't miss out on your calling. And you say, you don't understand. I've been giving a week to live. You didn't miss out on your calling. You don't understand, I went through a divorce. You didn't miss out on your calling. 
You don't understand. I, I kind of feel like I've lost my faith. I don't know where I'm going. You didn't miss out on your calling. You have a calling right now. God's calling you to do something. It doesn't matter how old you are, sick, poor, uneducated, young. You have a calling. Look, there's nothing more inspiring than seeing people at the end of their rope pursuing knowledge, pursuing growth, and pursuing God's best for others. I remember Dennis Prager was telling a story about how he used to visit hospice, and he said there's nothing more inspiring than going around seeing these people who are on their deathbed, and they were encouraging one another, they were writing letters, they were sitting there reading the newspaper, people who love to learn. These are people, I think, who had a love for knowledge and might even be people who understood, if I've got a day left, I'm going to use it. Look, if you're alive, you're alive for a reason. If you're alive, you have a calling. Even if you're retired, you still have a calling. And although this is a good time to have fun and to be with your grandkids and those types of things, you're at the best peak of your life when it comes to knowledge. You know more now than you've ever known. You're in the perfect place for God to use you in phenomenal ways. No matter how old you are, you have a calling. I remember when I was in, in, uh, in college, there was this guy, and he decided that everyone at this home near our, near our school, he's like, well, they still have a purpose. And he went down there, and he created a prayer team. And he started taking these prayer requests that would come into ORU from all around the world, and he'd bring them in. And this, pe- this table of, of saints would sit around this table, and they would pray by faith, with power, every day, spiritually breaking chains in the lives of others, that even though they weren't physically able to leave that space, God was using them to break spiritual chains. They believed, and I believe, that no matter who you are, if you're alive, you have a calling. Believe it. Believe it. So, you say, well, what is my calling? And I just say, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. (laughs) Can't help you there. God knows and he'll show you if you listen. But uh, I want to say this. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about your calling. Worry about your character. If you focus on your character, God will focus on your calling. If you work on being a Jesus kind of person, you'll have so much opportunity come to you, you'll have to shake it away with a stick. In fact, people that, who, who have built into themselves the character of Christ, their biggest challenge is saying no to all of the people that want help from them. If you become a Jesus kind of person, you'll automatically be a healing presence everywhere you go, and people will want more from you, and then you're going to have to practice boundaries. You're not going to be asking God, what's my calling? You're going to be thinking, stop calling me to so much stuff, I have to say no. <laughs> if you focus on your character... God will focus on your calling. If you focus on your character, God will focus on your calling. Forget about your calling. Don't worry about it. Worry about what kind of person you want to be. And God will prepare you for the next season of purpose in your life. Amen? Amen. And that's what I'm basing this off of the story. I finally get to the scripture at the end of my sermon. There's this great Advent story when God is preparing the way for Jesus. And it's this old priest named Zechariah. Zechariah is an old man, and his wife Elizabeth is an old woman. And he has worked in this temple forever. They have probably maybe a thousand priests working in this temple, and they're always taking turns. And what happens is every day, each team gets to roll the dice, and one person from that group gets to go and burn incense. If a priest is lucky, he will burn incense in in a 40-year period once in his life. And here's Zechariah. He's in the temple. And the lots are cast, and it comes to him. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Thousands of people turn to look at him. And he ascends the stairs to go into the holy place of the temple. And there he goes to burn incense before the Lord. And as he's going in, it's like, imagine being Zechariah. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Amazing experience. I've waited my whole life. I'm an old man. I've seen thousands of priests do this. It's finally my turn. As he's walking up, you can hear people outside singing and and saying things, and you might hear a roar. I mean, it's this really intense spiritual moment. I can't imagine being more expectant for God to do something. And he steps in, and he goes in, and of course, there's an angel standing, waiting for him. He says, Zachary, I have a message for you. You're going to have a son, 
and his name's going to be John. This is the foretelling, by the way, of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the man who went before Jesus and prepared the way a super important uh, character in the, in the story of the Gospels and the story of Jesus. And he says to, to Zechariah, you're going to have the son, and his name will be John. And Zechariah says kind of like, he's this old Jewish guy, and he's like, I don't know how that can be, pretty old. <laughs> you know? And my wife, she's pretty old too, I don't know. <laughs> and the funny thing about the story is, like, and now I'm putting this into the story, but I assume when I'm reading this text that this is a character issue for Zechariah. The scriptures say that Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous people, that they were good in God's eyes, that they did what was right. But, you know, you, you kind of imagine that there's this doubt and, and, and that there's this sort of response of Zechariah to speak doubt into something. And I'm just, I think, you know, if it's a once-in-a-lifetime t- uh, chance that I roll the dice, a one out of a thousand, that I'm going to go into the temple, then I want to go into the temple, there's an angel there, and the angel says something, and I'm like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem likely, I don't know. It seems like there might be a character issue there. And so what I think, I think, I think and I'm putting this into the text, but I think the character issue is cynicism. I think he's a cynic. I think he's an old man, he's probably been disappointed, and he probably wanted a kid, and he's been shooting it down. And so what, is, what happens in the story? The angel mutes him. He mutes him until his son is born. The first thing he's able to say is his name will be, his name will be John. And the, the reason I wanted to just finish with the story is this. God actually took care of Zechariah's character, his cynicism issue, so that he could take care of his calling. All that to simply say, friends, focus on your character, and God will get you to your calling. Look at the habits in your life, the little things, and devote your life to becoming more like Jesus, to becoming a Sermon on the Mount kind of person. Do everything you can to live and be more like Jesus. And God will get you to your calling. And today I just want to say, you can stop worrying about it. Don't worry about your calling. Worry about your character. And I'll just finish. When we've seen this quote before, I'll just one quote from Dallas Willard at the end. This is his prayer. Lord, don't give me more success than my character can handle. If that's a hard prayer to pray, congratulations, you're a human being. It's hard for all of us to pray that, but the harder it is for you to pray, the more you need to focus on your character and the less you need to focus on succeeding. If you focus on your character, God will prepare you for your destiny. Don't worry about your destiny. God's going to get you there, and it is good. And if you trust in the name of Jesus, your future is always bright, even when your present is dark. If you trust in the chain-breaking name of Jesus Christ, you will get to your good destiny. I promise. You don't have to worry. Focus on your character. Become more like Jesus, and God will get you where you need to be. Amen? Amen. All right, would you pray with me? In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray that you'd forgive us of our sins, that you renew us, and that you'd make us Jesus' kind of people. I pray, Father, that you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit. You'd help us to understand that this is your world and to give us faith that no matter what, we don't have to worry. That you want us to do great things, but I pray that you prepare our hearts and minds so when those great things come, we have the character to endure them and fulfill them. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen.